So here's the thing, no matter how skilled you get in Excel, whether you're an absolute wizard, a Microsoft MVP, it doesn't matter, you will continue to make mistakes. Everyone experiences these common Excel errors. And the purpose of this demo, this lecture, is to talk about six of the most common error types, discuss what they mean and how to fix them, and actually practice experiencing them inside of the Excel environment. So let's get started with the first error type. We've seen this one before. This is the hash mark error. And honestly, it's the simplest of all the errors because all it means is that the column isn't wide enough to display the underlying values. The fix there, super simple. All you have to do is drag or double click your column to increase the width until it can contain that value. So let's jump into Excel We're gonna, and see what this error looks like in context. All right, so here we are in Excel, back in our reference type tab. This is where we built out those financial projections in our reference type lecture. And for that hash mark error, we've seen it before. Let's go ahead and replicate it the same way that we produced it in the first case, which was removing any fixed references from our formula and dragging it out to column N. And remember, this produced those astronomical values here in columns I, J, K, etc. And remember, this is a very easy fix. Let's look at column J. We can either hover over the edge of the column and drag, or we can double click and it will auto fit the width to the widest or longest value inside of that column, which in this case is probably the simplest approach. You can also right click, choose column width and manually enter a value as well. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and undo those changes. Control Z one, two, three, four times until we're back to our original function in cell E4. So the next error we're going to talk about is the name error. And this is when Excel doesn't recognize text within a formula. It's Excel basically saying, what are you asking me to do right now? I don't understand. And so the way to fix that is to make sure that your function names are correct, that your references are valid, and that any text that you're trying to reference within a function is surrounded in quotes. So let's see what this looks like back in our Excel workbook. Let's say we want to add a new formula here in cell B8, and we're going to use something like a match function here. Again, we're going to cover this in depth. Don't worry too much about it. But basically, I'm saying, hey, Excel, I want you to match this text string, asset A, surrounded in quotes, and I want you to try to find its match right here in cells B4 through B6. And for the match type, I'm going to type a zero, which means I want you to find the exact match. And when I press enter, it works great. I get a one because it found asset A in the first position within this range. That's kind of how the match function works. But what if we spelled match wrong? You know, we forgot the C and we typed equals math. Well, Excel is confused because there is no math function and it gives us that name error. That's one very common reason why you might see this name error. The other reason is if we had spelled the function properly, but forgot to surround our text asset A with quotes. And we press enter, there you go, we get that same name error again. Next up, we've got the value error. And this is saying that your formula has the wrong type of argument. And far and away the most common cause for this value error is when you're trying to multiply text with values. So if you're trying to perform some sort of arithmetic operation, on text strings or cells that are formatted as text, this is where you'll most likely run across this error. So let's take a look at what that might look like. So to produce a value error here, let's say right here in D8, we added a new function and we tried to multiply a value like here in D4 by a text string like asset A. You know, just thinking about it, there's really no rational reasonable result that can come out of this. There's no real way to multiply text and numbers. And Excel is equally confused. That's why you see the value error returned. And obviously this is a very kind of clear cut case, right? You're multiplying by asset A, but other times it's not gonna be so crystal clear. You know, you may have values that are kind of disguised as text or text that's disguised as values. You know, phone numbers and zip codes are great examples of this, where it might not be 
quite so clear. It might be a little bit trickier to diagnose uh, these value issues. So keep that in mind, but that is the value error in a nutshell. All right, the fourth error type that I wanna talk about is div zero. This one speaks for itself. It means that you're dividing by zero or an empty cell. So just check your division, check your denominator. One thing to note here is that sometimes it's okay to have zero as your denominator. It doesn't necessarily mean you've done anything wrong. And in those cases, you can use things like if statements or if error formulas to kind of mask that error and display an alternate value if you choose. It's a common tool when you're trying to build uh, polished user-facing reports and dashboards. And I think that one is straightforward enough that we don't need to do a hands-on example. Let's move right on to the next one, which is the ref error. And that means that your formula is referring to a cell that's no longer valid. A common cause is when you reference a cell or a range and then accidentally move, delete, or replace that range that you had previously referenced. So this is actually a pretty common one. Let's jump back into our Excel workbook and I'll show you a common cause uh, for why this might happen. All right, back in our reference type tab, remember that all of these values that we created for our projections were based on the growth rates in column C. So what if we accidentally deleted that column? Well, you'd get a whole range of ref errors. And that's because Excel is trying to evaluate the function. And in this argument of the function, it's pointing to a cell that no longer exists. So that old cell reference that would have pointed to the growth rate is now replaced by a ref error. And that's how the formula evaluates. Let's control Z and we'll get that column back. But that's really the most common cause for the ref error. You've referenced a cell and then accidentally moved, overwritten, or deleted it so that Excel can no longer trace back to that source. All right, now the final error type that I wanna talk about is the NA error. And this means that you have a formula that can't find or locate a referenced value. This is a little bit different from the ref error where we were unable to find an entire cell reference. In this case, it's usually caused by searching for some sort of a match that can't be found. So this is really common with lookup and reference functions things like index, match, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, those are the cases where you're most likely to run into an NA error. So let's jump back into Excel one more time, and I'll show you an example of when you might experience this one. All right, so back in Excel, let's jump into our formula in B8. Remember, we wrote that match function to search for asset A within the cell range here. Let's go ahead and edit that formula in the formula bar. I'm going to surround asset A in quotes again. And instead of A, let's search for asset D. Now, obviously, asset D doesn't exist within that range. So when we press enter, that's where we would get an NA error. So pretty common example. We'll see more cases of this as we dig into VLOOKUP formulas uh, later on in the course. But there you have it. That's your quick crash course in six of the most common Excel error types and how to begin to diagnose them. In the next couple lectures, we're going to talk about some really powerful formula auditing tools, which will help you understand and fix your formulas even more effectively.